Todos conocemos una canción que tiene millones de años. Llega a nosotros atravesando el tiempo. Como podemos entender, una canción tan antigua debe ser muy sencilla. Y es que, incluso cientos de millones de años antes de que las flores aparecieran en la tierra, ya se cantaba esta canción. Cucú, hello, hello, lindo. Un intervalo que ha llegado a nosotros. Las puertas llaman con esa canción. Y de la música, la comunicación, esencia de la vida, el concierto en el que nos encontramos, nacen lenguajes, un legado ante la realidad de cada momento. La primera vez que vi al Canagur, entre canción y canción, él hablaba de cómo viajar en el tiempo. ¿Por qué un estudiante de físicas había dedicado su vida al amor por la música? Porque es una máquina del tiempo. En aquel concierto empezamos a construir la semilla de este proyecto. La intención de compartir la salud a través de la música y las culturas, entender los caminos de esta lucha por la vida en paz y el desafío del conflicto. del proyecto compartimos conciertos, canciones, compañeros, amantes del arte y de la cultura, defensores de la justicia, la salud y la belleza, partes de la memoria, momentos muy especiales para nosotros. Miles de diferentes historias se encontraban. El ruiseñor en la jaula de oro Esta canción que escuchamos relata una historia que podemos encontrar en casi toda Asia El conflicto entre la libertad y el valor la belleza encerrada en esa jaula de oro. Quizá nosotros mismos. Algunas canciones han quedado reflejadas como las primeras de la historia, como el epitafio de seis kilos. Mientras vivas, brilla, no temas nada en absoluto. Que la vida dura poco y el tiempo exige el final. Podemos encontrar otras historias y otros documentos. ¿Cuáles son los primeros? ¿Quiénes han sido testigos? En los escritos cuniformes podemos encontrar los primeros relatos de la historia. Muchas de estas tablas hablan de batallas y victorias, pero otras son íntimas. Una en especial nos llama la atención. Quizá la primera canción de la historia, la nana de Sulji, han cambiado los sentimientos y los conflictos humanos que sabemos de su arte, de su sociedad y, por supuesto, que podemos saber de la nana. Si la historia empieza con los primeros escritos, la historia empieza con Moises. Cuando 
bu genç insanın hislerini aynen yansıtması bakımından. Yani şöhret işi, o üzüntüsü, sevgisi hepsi orada gösteriyor. İnsanlar yani hiçbir zaman hislerinde değişmemiş. Ben şimdi kendime bakıyorum. Yüz yaşındayım. Acaba hislerimde değişiklik var mı diye düşünüyorum. Hayır, hiç yok. Ben gençken olduğu gibi sevebiliyorum. Gençliğimde olduğu gibi bir güzel şey gördüğüm zaman heyecanlanıyorum. Üzülüyorum, ağlıyorum. Hani hiç hislerimde en ufak bir değişiklik yok. Ben fark etmiyorum. Demek ki yüz yaş, yüz yaşında olmama rağmen fark etmedim. Aynı çalışma arzum aynı. Gezmek ayaklarım müsaade ederse gezerim. Bir şey mesela bayılıyorum sanat yerlerini gezmeyi, bir sanat eserlerini dinlemeyi, şey etmeyi çok hoşuma gidiyor ama gidemiyorum. Bakma. Hani demek ki insanların hissi değişmiyor. Sümerlerde zamanında da aynı. İnsanlar sevmiş, kıskanmış, üzülmüş, kızmış, kavga etmiş. Aynen devam etmiş. Hiç farkı yok. Betinlerde bunları görüyoruz. İşte Nini de görüyoruz. Anne sevgisi, anne heyecanı, annenin üzüntüsünü görüyoruz. Öbür taraftan kıskanç bir kadının şeyi görüyoruz, okuyoruz. O, yani kızlık kızgınlığını okuyoruz. Öbür tarafta bir anne sevgisini okuyoruz. Annesinin bir çocuğun sevgisini yazmış, ne kadar güzel o. Babanı, babası ölüyor, ona güzel bir yazı yazıyor, şiir yazıyor. Hani bugünden hiç farkı olmadığını görüyoruz hayatım. İnsanlarda hırs var, sahip olma hırsı var her zaman. Elde etme hırsı var. Kazanma hırsı var, yapma hırsı var, bir devam etmiş. Ne yapalım? Bu hırsı gideremiyoruz, hala öyle devam edip gidiyor. Evet. Hırslarını yani söndürülebilir. Ama herkes de o e, müzik kabiliyeti yok kız kızım. Yani ancak o işten gelecek, o müziği yapacak, onu duyacak. Onlar da, o, o olmayan insanlar da o olamaz bence. Kendi içinde müzik zevki olmayan insanların yani birçok hırslarını, birçok şeylerini müzikle kapatacağını pek tahmin etmiyorum. Yani sanatkar değil fakat sanatı seven, sanatı sanattan anlamaya çalışan insanlar tabii öyle. Yani e, daha e, insancıl, daha e, şey yani huzurlu olabilirler. Ama sanattan anlamayan, sanatı bilmeyen, anlamayan, bilmeyenler bunu yapmazlar zannetmiyor. Sanattan anlamayan insanda bir huzur pek olmaz. Yani ancak sanattan anlayacak, onu şey yapacak, o kendine bir huzur verecek. 
çalmasa bile. Mesela ben kendimi öyle düşünebilirim. Ben çalmıyorum ama böyle bir müzik duyduğum zaman, bir şey duyduğum zaman son derece mutlu oluyorum. Yani o mutluluk bana bir huzur veriyor, bir sükunet veriyor. Kavga etmek istemem. Ben hastalıklı toplum kabul etmiyorum da. Aa, hastalıklı toplum kabul etmiyorum, ne yapayım? Yani, bizim gençlerde çok tatlı çocuklar var, ben görüyorum. Çok akıllı, ondan sonra çok başarılı, çok şeyli çocuklar var. Bakın şu gezi e, şeyinde, ne kadar güzel bir gösteri yaptılar. Bayıldım. Hani bu her zaman, her zaman karışıklık böyle şey toplumların içinde. Hiçbir zaman huzurlu bir toplum olmamış dünyada. Tarihi görün, açın, bakın hep öyle. Hiçbir zaman huzurlu bir toplum olmamış. Ne kadar huzurluysak ona şey diyeceğiz, mutlu olacağız, o kadar. Hakikaten onun için ben toplumumuzu, insanımızı kötü olarak, böyle hastalıklı olarak kabul etmek istemiyorum. İletişim eksikliği. Evet. Kendi görüşüm Münih hakkında. Yani her anne çocuğuna nini söyler. Demek ki annelerin çocuklar çocuklarıyla bir iletişim kurması niniyle. Daha bebek çok küçükken. Ben öyle diyorum. Nini anneyle bir anneyle çocuğun bir iletişimi. Yani nini e, söylemedeki söylemindeki ruh o zamandan bu zamana aynen geliyor mu diyorsunuz? Bana kalsa geliyor. Yani ben madem ki bir anne ile çocuk arasındaki bir iletişimdir bu. Onun bütün e, hiçbir şey değişmedi bu iletişimlerde, yani hislerde. Şu halde bugün de annelerin aynı hisle çocuklarına nini söylüyor ve onlarla bir nevi iletişim kuruyor demektir. Yani hiçbir zaman e, kültürün yani şey etmediği, değişmediği anlaşılıyor. Hislerin değişmediği. Anlaşılıyor bu da. Ninni ninni Neşe dolu şarkımla Kuvvetli olarak büyüsün o Neşe dolu şarkımla Kocaman olsun o İrin ağacı gibi Kökünden kuvvetli olsun o Şakir bitkisi gibi tacından geniş büyüsün o. Uyku, o senin üzerine elini koyacak. Orada yatan seni koruyacak. Oğlum, uyku seni yeniyor. Uyku üstüne çökmek üzere. Gel uyku, gel uyku. Onun yorgun gözlerini uyut. Elini onun kömür gözlerinin üzerine koy. Ağlayan diline, 
ağlamasıyla uykusunu bozdurtma. Sevgili. Probablemente una nana sea la primera canción de la historia, el primer aliento que recibimos de nuestras madres. Sulji y Tara Murán dejaron constancia escrita de la canción que dedicaron a su hijo, que enfermo necesitaba cuidados. Nos dice que lo meten para que se duerma, un canto nostálgico y tranquilizador. Posteriormente se escribieron ejercicios de notación musical como la que encontramos en la pieza Soyen MS 5105. Aparecen las primeras canciones con notación musical como los homenajes a batallas y dioses, el lugarit a la diosa Nikal. También conservamos instrumentos de la época como el Har Mose, de unos 3.500 años de antigüedad. Anterior a los primeros escritos, conocemos instrumentos musicales hechos con gran delicadeza y detalle, como las liras de Ur, de hace unos 4.400 años. Pero desconocemos qué canciones e historias reflejan sus dibujos. Aún más atrás en el tiempo, los dibujos y los símbolos demuestran que las comunidades solían disfrutar de una vida cultural extensa. Entendemos que los edificios culturales son necesarios para los humanos porque son necesarios las bibliotecas, los espacios musicales, los espacios, los archivos, los museos, las catedrales, los templos. Hoy lo hemos diversificado todo. Pero los espacios culturales nacieron en las cuevas, como uno solo, y de aquí se diversificó todo. Por eso en las cuevas no solo aparece el arte, no solo aparece el dibujo, la escultura, el, el grabado, sino que también aparecen los instrumentos musicales. Y eso quiere decir que eran espacios culturales no diversificados, sino unificados. Y en ese sentido, el arte tiene un valor añadido, y todos los humanos del siglo XXI lo sabemos, que, que nos vincula con nuestra propia cultura, con el saber más alto. Hoy en día no se estudia el arte como la técnica que ha permitido hacer estos dibujos, sino el por qué a, a, estos dibujos han permanecido con validez cultural durante tantos milenios. Es decir, que venían a verlo. Los grupos venían a verlo. En la cueva de Ardales se halla una maravillosa colección de dibujos y otros rastros de la vida cultural que durante cientos de siglos realizaron aquí. Una pequeña mano infantil nos demuestra que en el fondo de la cueva se realizaban clases en épocas ancestrales, quizás también cantando. Estamos hablando de cosas que tienen 30.000, 20.000 años dibujadas. Y entonces, estos son, no hay por qué creerse que estos sean sus dioses. Esto es su catálogo de alimentos. Y a lo largo de 300 siglos, nadie dibujó encima de nadie. Sí, ningún autor hizo su dibujo por encima de un autor anterior. Con lo cual hay un concepto de respeto, primero. Y segundo, de añadido a la iconografía. Aquí hay cosas que, por ejemplo, estas cosas pueden tener 20.000 años de antigüedad. Y las manos, 40.000 años de antigüedad. Así que están entre nosotros... Eh, eh, esto es, es, eh, los dibujantes de estos ciegos están entre nosotros y las manos que eran ya 20.000 años antiguas. No, no, nunca fue solo arte. Que nunca fue solo arte porque no fue... El, el, los motivos dibujados no fue nunca una cuestión personal, sino fue una cuestión global de la comunidad. 
Y por tanto aquí no es solo arte, hay que transmitir una información. Además, una información útil y tan útil que sirvió durante muchos cientos de siglos. De haber perdido su validez, lo hubieran borrado, hubieran hecho otra cosa en sí. Nunca perdió su validez. Es el mismo discurso. Siempre. Sí. Las bramaderas o churingas usadas a lo largo de casi todo el mundo desde hace 20.000 años. Flautas de diferentes huesos de hasta 35.000 años han sido halladas en diferentes partes del mundo y en algunos casos construidas por otras especies que convivían con nosotros como las flautas neandertales. antes que nosotros. Obviamente lo, lo nuestro es una herencia de, de, todo lo que, de todo lo que ha pasado por aquí, eso está claro. ¿no? Lo que pasa es que claro, no se sabe muy bien qué. Y somos muchas veces somos tan orgullosos que nos creemos haber inventado cosas. ¿no? Cuando en realidad pues son seguramente adquiridas de otros conocimientos. ¿no? Que al fin y al cabo. ¿no? tiene una cuota de error, si el error es tomado como, como tal, pues eh, así queda el error, pero muchas veces el error engendra un nuevo, un nuevo sistema y, y en consecuencia una nueva, una nueva música. Por ejemplo, el, la fórmula del guaguancó pues fue seguramente mal copiada por los, por los españoles que fueron que estuvieron allí y, y se trajeron una rumba que en sí podíamos decir que puede ser un, menos compleja que el guaguancó o una fórmula más, más simple pero al hacerse simple también elabora sus propias leyes de manera de que de repente una cosa simple se convierte en, un, en una compleja nuevamente y vuelve a tener su sabor y su, y su idiosincrasia completa. Así seguramente ha pasado por los siglos de los siglos y, y las, copias, las copias con errores se convierten en sistemas nuevos y sistemas que tienen nuevas eh, alternativas y, y nuevas visiones. En definitiva, podías decir que eso, que el error no existe. Ta también no sé quién inventó la pólvora por error, no sé quién parece que descubrió América por error, y tantas y tantas cosas que se pueden hacer por error y que de repente eh, significan un nuevo horizonte. Así que el error no existe. Yo muchas veces cuando toco, haces Haces una, una nota, te das cuenta de que hay un, un error, de que has metido una nota que a priori no está bien, pero en vez de rehusarla, la somatizas 
y entra perfectamente dentro de la armonía y de hecho puede ser la piedra angular de un nuevo de una nueva emoción, de un nuevo sistema armónico. ¿no? Así que es difícil verlo así, pero, pero funciona. Yo, vamos, mi vida es un error en el cual me baso continuamente <ríe> y de ahí evoluciono a, a, a nuevos horizontes y nuevas sensaciones. Desconocemos qué sucedía a lo largo de un gran margen de tiempo, pero conocemos algunos de los dibujos y grabados más antiguos, como los encontrados en la cueva de Blombos, Sudáfrica. Una pequeña lasca de roca y otros fragmentos nos demuestran una capacidad de comunicación simbólica que se remonta entre 40.000 y 70.000 años. Una de estas piezas quizá nos enseña un plano de una choza o una especie de trigrama con varios zigzags. Hace unos 50.000 años parece coincidir un despertar en la expresión, que dejaron manos sopladas en partes del mundo tan diversas como Europa y, como vemos en este caso, en Sulawesi, una región muy aislada al sur de Asia, la cueva de Leang. También entendí que su nombre se traducía como la Cueva del Rey, porque allí vivía un sabio con grandes capacidades. Algunas estalagmitas y estalactitas muestran su uso como litófonos con músicas que resonaron desde hace unos 100.000 años. Estos hallazgos demuestran que la musicalidad apareció como una de las primeras formas de expresión, no solamente en nuestra especie, formando parte de la diversidad de las costumbres y rituales que han evolucionado de diferentes maneras hasta nuestros tiempos. En muchos casos, un legado transmitido entre generaciones. En otros, herencias profesionales. Es común encontrarnos en cualquier parte del mundo rituales musicales asociados a los funerales, bodas y eventos sociales de diferentes clases. Probablemente, muchas de las historias mitológicas en todo el mundo, antes de ser escritas, fueron cantos y rezos dedicados no solamente a dioses y personas relevantes, sino también a la vida y la gente. So 
uh, first one uh, as I'm composer and I'm musician in Malaysia Kamalang and I was born in traditional family my father was uh, the drummer you know he's musician he to he teach me the first time to play kendang you know to play gamelan and I grew up become musician and composer and I grew up in this village which is now you see a bit that where hotel restaurant it put tourist and then it is same thing the music you know the musician you know the artist how they can survive of course you know uh, they do something for tourists because they need the food they need to eat you know um, but in the same way you know the kuasa and the power you know tourists the world is tourists they they come to enjoy it they come to have fun they come to the place which is give them something happy it's not not something thinking about but something i want to have fun i want to relax i want to you know that tourist this is you know the connection in between touristic industrial and of course i gonna say it's a stupid thing for myself because who care who care about the thinking about who care nature it's money you know when i was kid this place it best for me it's best you know Balinese people they love their place they love their culture they love their island so the, my question it is Balinese people they still love the, their island they still love their culture or their traditional way what is the industry what is the direction where is the cultural orientation we lost it we lost you know the culture of hearing because people think the image more important because you know if, if, if you see the promote the promotion always tell you the image especially today where you know like the globalization you know when the nature disturbed by the power you know, the, the, the power about money of course of course uh, I need money <laughs> people need money because that's that's the, the realistic now now it's not like maybe Bali in let's say in, in the of 1990 so you know we can share in the village you know you do that you don't have a food it's good to the next family you can eat together but not today because I don't know the answer when it art like why the industry so just just too many things you know have to thinking it's a big thing but in the, the point is what should I do so I came back to myself I just do what I love I want to do what I love on the right way as well as I'm you know, artist, as well as a composer, I compose a piece with my idea. It's not just about how my idea can be played on the instrument, on the media of instrument gamelan or you know instrument or music, but also how to share to the people. Because what what I believe with my idea, it is on the right way. Um, because my work or my peace that I believe and then I that I believe to answer my question. Thank you.
because I want the next generation you know, learn how to listen uh, learning to listen that mean they are no understanding uh, because no understanding they are no appreciation to me you know when you think about love you know even you have you don't have to say it because if you feel it and you have a sensitivity feeling you know it's love as my musician or you know composer it's depend on contact because the, the process is still uh, uh, like a practice you know but it love is like i said it's here when you know everything and you can feel it you know that's love but in the process because you learn so love is love is something you know you don't need to find anywhere but love you can find in yourself first you need struggle you need struggle to tell people about love you know they're coming and I tell them you know, I love you all you play my piece and they play again, play again, play again, and they understand what I mean. Even they can't say anything because they're abstracting. Love is abstract. People fight because they forget about love. They don't have it when they fight. It's same like my music, and we learn it. We want to develop. It. We do evolution to this. It's not just evolution, you know. Um, uh, but people always make a competition, you know. Because I have a opinion. Just because of power, you know. You know, Tajan, cock fighting. All the king like that, you know. In our story, all the king like like that, love that, and they use people like cockfighting. They used culture like cockfighting. The famous music now in Bali is still kabiar. That's good music. I like it, of course. So why they famous? People won't understand. But the root of kabiar is competition. The root. Akar is is is competition. Kabiar is about the struggle. The struggle about freedom is not about competition. That's because they have a power. The music they powerful because of the struggle. They took the music from the kingdom to the public, to the people. For the people, it's not just for the king. For the people. And freedom. It's a big struggle. And then, after that, the power control again. Uh, care about how to listen it. It's enough. Long time ago, uh, people, uh, the king, it's like cockfighting, and then, okay, you good musician, you good musician. But the king said, this could be better. People, oh yes, because king kept the power. They don't want to understand what they on. They just won't understand what they know, like before. But my music is not for before. This is music, it's for music. For evolution of music.
cannot uh, run from the evolution. Everything can be changed. Because of that, we need to know how to change. So again, if you say love, that's it. So in the struggle about the good way you believe it, love coming. Like a uh, music give me a lot, give me a lot. The music give me a lot, you know. I want to find myself there, and I want to tell the musician, "Is find yourself there." It's that because we work hard, we practice hard to find ourselves there. So don't care what people said. But if we find ourselves there, because this music I what I believe is good music. Yeah, that's to me what I do here. It, it is for music. So um, you know, to me, like you said, music happens before the culture. Music is everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere. But you are not everywhere. So, it's music is the knowledge. You know, like, like you see the the horizontal of the uh, on the ocean. Uh, you understand more than be. You see more far. But you feel enough, you know, because you are yeah, like under control of your egoism. Because you don't have enough knowledge. Yeah. You know? Like this, you see very high, and you can't see what's going on in the far. It's never ending. And this process, and this is a process.
kamu yang jauh di sana pudimos ser testigos de la enorme diversidad de sus culturas. Nos invitaron a conocer algunos de los primeros vestigios del hinduismo. En la selva, cercano a la aldea de Bengala, el lugar donde un pueblo sordo aprendió a comunicarse con los símbolos y donde se celebra un festival con músicos sordos. También conocimos la profundidad de la cultura de Makassar y sus cantos. la evolución ha sido fruto de unas influencias muy poco extendidas en el mundo. La música se desarrolló con modos y temperados exclusivos de estas regiones tan aisladas del planeta. Existen conexiones milenarias entre las culturas de Sulawesi y otras islas con los aborígenes australianos. Su genética confirma la asociación de dos pueblos que fueron separados por la naturaleza. Hace unos 10.000 años, tras la última glaciación del planeta, los niveles de los océanos y mares han aumentado y cambiado varias veces. Algunos de estos sucesos son conocidos en diferentes mitologías a lo largo del mundo. Conocimiento probablemente en forma de cantos que llegaron a estos tiempos atravesando nuestras culturas y las personas que los estudiaron. Well, uh, my name is Brian Mooney, and I'm a professor of philosophy and, uh, and head of School of Creative Arts and Humanities at Charles Darwin University. And uh, I was quite excited to hear about the project that you are engaged in um, on the philosophical relationship between music, justice, love, and, uh, and, and how this plays itself out in our historical traditions. Um, In this respect, I think it's very interesting that the, the great ancient Greek philosopher Plato uh, thought that the world was made up by God, or the demiurge, uh, under two conditions. One was mathematical rigor, but the other one was music, music and playfulness. And of course, the idea of music as being part of the created order uh, is a very old trope in many traditions from the 
Aboriginal traditions of Australia, the Indigenous traditions, across many of the most ancient and uh, great traditions of the world. In the, uh, in the ancient Greek world, again, Pythagoras um, had a theory about the harmony of the spheres, that there was a music built into the cosmos, uh, that, uh, that if we attuned ourselves, attuned our souls to the, uh, to the nature of the rhythms of the universe, that that musicality would come out on us, that we would participate in the divine music. And it's interesting in this respect as well, when I was talking about Plato, that the, the Sufi philosophers, um, Sufi thinkers from the Islamic tradition, from Tasawwuf, uh, also referred to Plato as, and this is almost uh, uh, you know, sacrilegious from the, from the perspective of Islam, they referred to Plato as the divine Plato. And this is partly because of the, uh, the wondrous uh, engagement uh, that he has with the nature of the human soul and uh, its relationship to community, to music, and to, uh, and to truth, justice, um, goodness and beauty. Now, one of the things about the, uh, the musical culture is that it, it celebrates something very, very deep. I don't know that it's ever possible to put your finger exactly on what it is that resonances, these resonances that come from music, from song. But nonetheless, uh, they, they do deeply affect people. Um, so uh, the, the, the experiences of, of, of uh, engaging in a mu musical, uh, musical life um, uh, created great friendships, great understanding of uh, other traditions, other ways of looking at things. It also uh, relates very strongly, the musical tradition, to something that I take to be very, very important, which is storytelling. I think that one of the problems with modern society is that we have forgotten how to be storytellers. Now most rich cultures have a very strong account of storytelling and, and engaging in storytelling, storytelling about their lives, about their histories, about their grandparents, generations that went before. And it's this song, music, storytelling that ties all these elements of cultural history together and creates us as the kinds of persons we are. Mostly related to the relationship between three questions. What is the nature of the self? What is the nature of love and friendship? And what is the nature of justice? These are the three interlinking questions that have animated my philosophical background, but also my musical history. And when I talk about music, I think it's also important that despite this wondrous capacity for music to create friendships um, across divides, across uh, cultures and traditions, it's also that it is a two, it's a double-edged sword because sometimes music can also be used for purposes which actually relate to violence and not to peace. Uh, I think we too often forget this. Storytelling can also go the, uh, the same direction. Storytelling can be edifying, it can create the, the conditions under which our souls are, are amplified, in which we can engage with other people in richer and deeper ways uh, of meaning. But it can also do the opposite. It can lead to situations where a song, in particular, uh, with a particular political message can lead to murder. Music has on the one hand the capacity to create wonderful synergies and to, uh, to lead to embracing of others and understanding, but it can at the same time also be used for other purposes. Of course, protest is a very, very important aspect of the nature of the song tradition. But remember, we now use the, word, the term protest in a kind of negative way, but 
its original meaning in the Latin is, is to stand for something. Um, it's to go, it's, it's, it's to stand up and be counted. So protest uh, and political songs, social uh, commentary, are crucial dimensions of that tradition because they're trying to find or trying to explicate the nature of injustices and how they might be uh, dealt with. So the, that musical tra tradition is, uh, is alive, uh, is important, is flourishing and is something that I'm deeply committed to along with my philosophy as well, which, uh, as I say, has been largely related to questions around the nature of the self, the nature of love and friendship and to the nature of justice. I think one of the things that the appreciation of music lends to anyone is the capacity to listen. Because you're listening to, uh, um, standing back from the, the maelstrom of activity that goes on in everybody's lives, where we're busy, busy, busy. And there's a time to stop, step back from that and to contemplate the musicality and the lyrics within the very present. This um, aesthetic dimension of, uh, of human beings uh, is, I think, crucial. And is also uh, in the busyness of the modern world increasingly becoming lost. Uh, the capacity to step away from all of these things to just engage in pure aesthetic pleasure of uh, listening carefully to lyrics or listen carefully and becoming immersed in the music. Um, what is this life so full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. And of course, I think this is part of the problem. But people who become attuned to music, uh, when they're careful and listening to music, they develop responses and capacities that enable them to live more healthily as human beings. Because that kind of uh, pure aesthetic pleasure is it's pristine in a way that so many uh, pleasures are not. Um, it, uh, it, it has a form of self-transcendence. It moves us both inter interiorly, but also moves us beyond ourselves to think the beauty that lies outside the nature of the self. We don't have the time and the capacity to appreciate everything, but certainly we should make the time to try and appreciate something. You know, on the one hand, philosophy is an attempt to uh, bring under some form of rational control. One of the philosophers, who still holds that there's a great deal of mystery, what you call magic, in the nature of the world. Uh, I think it's part of the great joy of living, that there is this magic or this, this m mystery, the mystery of the self. Even though I've spent you know, 35 years studying the nature of love and friendship. Uh, I understand a bit about it. I don't think I can ever understand wholly the nature of the depths of the mystery of love and the depths of the mystery of friendship. I agree with you that there's a certain kind of magic associated with music. Um, uh, there have been some philosophers who have tried to explicate in some way these uh, the, the, this magical nature of music and its relationship to the self, its relationship to society through justice, which is a form of music, a harmony. Uh, the, uh, you know, for instance, Emanuel Swedenborg developed a theory of correspondence, which is the way in which uh, there are reciprocal influences between various kinds of spiritual dimensions of the world will be expressed in the forests, in the sea, in the mountains, in music, and will have reflections in the nature of the self. And of course, in the Middle Ages, this was part of the nature of the alchemist's work, to see what the correspondences are between the various elements and how they relate to each other in these uh, quasi-magical ways. So uh, I think, uh, I, I, I do believe that music is one of the ways in which we open ourselves up to mystery, uh, and uh, and uh, you know, I think mystery is a very healthy thing to have. <laughs>
incluso aquí parece que el misterio siempre nos acompañará. En una pequeña cueva en mitad de los desiertos australianos dedicamos esta reflexión musical que fue precedida del coro de Arillonga. Una pequeña comunidad con una historia de inclusión excepcional. Quisiera usar en parte las palabras de un compañero invitado al proyecto que ya no nos acompaña, José Cervera. Normalmente hemos compartido el planeta con otras especies de homínidos, parientes nuestras, que también eran inteligentes. Desde que se extinguieron los neandertales, estamos solos. Pero existen otras formas de ser un ser humano. En Australia había más de 900 comunidades con cientos de idiomas diferentes. Su cultura era completamente diferente a la del resto del mundo. Sus historias provenientes de la ensoñación, una dimensión que une todos los tiempos. Todos estos relatos se cantan. Y no es solamente la canción, es un mapa, un archivo, un calendario, la ley, el condicionamiento. Incluso hechos históricos que se han conservado en las canciones de hasta 70.000 años. Lo importante es la tierra y sus habitantes. Tienes que preservar la tierra y quienes la habitan, porque cada uno tiene su función. ¿Y cuál es la función del ser humano? Cantar. Porque cantando los caminos, cantando las montañas, nosotros mantenemos el mundo vivo. Así nos relataba esta historia de humanidad y conocimiento. Y es que aquí aún encontramos un legado vivo transmitido por generaciones, estando aisladas del resto de las culturas hasta hace muy poco. Además de esta excepcionalidad y su diversidad, es sorprendente el carácter profundamente pacífico de sus costumbres. Resulta imposible transmitir la experiencia y el legado que de manera tan íntima se vive dentro de estas comunidades. Como las canciones son el formato universal en el que convive la realidad. es conocer el legado que estamos descubriendo. Aún nos queda por ver un pequeño paso. No podemos acertar de qué manera fueron otros sucesos a lo largo del mundo y el tiempo, otros fenómenos importantes en la evolución del pensamiento conceptual y las tecnologías. Todo parece indicar que en la isla de Java se encuentra un importante yacimiento arqueológico, donde apareció una concha que muestra un zigzag grabado que se realizó intencionadamente. Algunos estudios datan esta pieza de casi medio millón de años. En un meandro del río solo, a los pies de la pequeña aldea de Trinil, podemos ver los restos que aún perduran y un pequeño museo. Y aunque la exactitud de la datación es discutida, no su valor como una de las primeras pequeñas señales en el mapa del tiempo que seguimos cantando.
Hacía mucho tiempo que esperábamos este momento. Volamos hacia Adana, desde donde realizamos un corto traslado hasta Yenet, el cielo y el paraíso, la cueva que aparece en diferentes mitologías, la lucha contra el dragón vencido con la música, entre el cielo y el infierno. For me, I mean, I'm going far and far away from recording ideas, you know. We have more right uh, playing at the moment instead of repeating and repeating and repeating. It, we need the documentary and whatever, but I, I know music from all time, there's no recording. It comes. So, you took the uh, knowledge, you took the, uh, this power from the human, you make for them, you know. Everybody has the inside this power, doing, uh, creating ideas and music and writing books or saying something or whatever. Anyway. You can't be only by your, like yourself, nothing else, not much or not less. I'm not a musician, I'm, I'm just interested in music and I try to think through music. It helps, it's a way of life, so I, I like music. Because it, it's a way to find a solution for anything, you know. It's a habit of life, like uh, sleeping, <laughs> eating or something. You know? So it's not a profession. So I'm going that way into music. Nuestra aventura hacia lo desconocido, acompañar a Ercano Gur frente a las profundidades de esta cueva mitológica y escuchar allí la respiración del dragón que espera. Bajo la puerta del cielo, tras la primera iglesia a la Virgen María, nos adentramos. 300 escalones hasta el fondo. detenemos en el último rincón frente al sonido que nos llama. Thank you.
ayuda a aliviar el sufrimiento. No sé si fue un sueño, realidad o aún seguimos soñando. El legado del código, la metáfora, la música y su conocimiento atravesando las vidas. La ensoñación que compartimos. Не кончили, а семья.